If you're anything like me, and you grew up in the same time period as me, chances are you might have some of these lying around. This is an 8mm uh, camcorder tape. These 8mm tapes, um, a lot of you will have them lying around your house. And I do as well, and I recently unearthed them. I actually didn't really know we had them. And I needed something to play them on. And I decided that I wanted to digitise them. Uh, because the problem with anything analogue like this is eventually it breaks down and eventually it will degrade to the point where it's unwatchable or the tape will break or um, you'll get to the point where it's so obsolete that nothing will play them anymore. I'm a student with a part-time job so I don't have money to go out and buy... Ooh. I don't have the money to go out and buy huge video editing decks where I can just slot one of these in with an adapter or buy a digitizer box so I can dump it straight onto the Mac. There are boxes out there that will take an analog source and put it through USB or Firewire to a Mac or a PC. Um, I don't have the money for that so I basically uh, did what I could with what I had and that's what this how-to is, is how to do it with some stuff you probably already have in your house. So you'll need obviously something that you want to digitise. Um, in my case, some standard Sony 8mm videotapes. This is one as you can see going to Fiji 1994. Secondly, you'll need something to read that original footage. In this case, a 8mm Sony Handycam testament to Sony engineering this. My, this is my uncle's camera. He's had it for about 13 years. Um, it's never had anything done to it. It's still got its original battery which still lasts you about two hours. Um, great little camera. And I can read these. Now the next thing you'll need is some way of digitising your footage. So the great thing about the Sony camera is on the side here You've got RCA outputs. So, if you just get bog standard RCA cables, and Lord knows we've got enough of these lying around our house, if you've got DVD players and VCRs and what have you, I'm sure you will too. So all you need to do is plug that in, and now you've got output to a TV, which is fantastic. I mean, that's what the ports on these were originally designed for so that you could, instead of going through the kerfuffle of dubbing this to a VHS tape back in the day, you could simply take it to somebody's house, plug it straight into their standard TV and off, off you went. Now though, using this device here, which is again a bog standard DVD recorder. DVD recorders, of course, this is quite a nice pioneer example, but DVD recorders, if you want a really cheap one, there's plenty of uh, Shall we say Chinese brands out there that will quite happily sell you a $50 one that does everything you need to. Um, remember, of course, you're not going to need the best quality because chances are half the stuff you're digitizing is at extremely low resolution. So you're not going to need, you know, a Blu-ray recorder or something ridiculous like that. So all you have to do is take your RCA cable, which you can see here, and plug it into the front input that most DVD recorders have. You're going to want something to record to. In my case, just some blank DVD-Rs. So let's start up the DVD recorder. Pop in a new blank disc. Take our handy cam and turn it on. So put it on the player mode. And when it comes, and you can see now we have some input. Bear in mind, of course, that you may need to put your DVD recorder on to correct input. Most of them have a little button that in this case says input select. So then you'd put it onto line two, which is the frontmost uh, input. And then what you're going to want to do is make sure your DVD has enough room. Now, in the case of this DVD recorder, using standard play, which is what you'll want to use, um, XP, which is the highest quality setting this particular one does, you're not going to take advantage of that with 8mm film. So, standard programming, you can put two hours on DVD. Now, considering most of these tapes are 90 minutes, can make things a little awkward, so you can change the recording mode on this particular Pioneer model to long play, which is four hours per DVD, so that's 
um, at least two of the tapes. Press play on the camcorder. And hit record on here. And here we go. So now you can see it's recording. Um, you have full sound in with it. So if you haven't guessed, that is me as an extremely small child. Um, and as you can see, as you'll see as we get into this tape a little bit, um, it has started to degrade and that, you know, the tracking sometimes is a little bit, a little bit off. But now we're recording to a DVD and this is digitizing because now that you're putting it onto a DVD, it's in a digital format. So it won't degrade provided the disc is taken care of. But stop record on DVD player and hit stop on the camcorder. So in the case of this Pioneer DVD recorder, you'll, once you've recorded a bunch of things to the disc, you'll want to finalise the disc. Now you need to do this with most DVD recorders. Basically, um, the video standard that they use means that you can record to a disc time and time again. Uh, however, if you want to go ahead and use it in a computer, for example, and it's not finalised, chances are the computer will spit it back at you and say, um, no, I don't know what this is. So, what you want to do, and this will be in the individual instructions of your uh, DVD recorder, if you go to Disk Setup on the Pioneer, go Finalize, Finalize, Next Screen, and then it asks you, you know, what QT menu, and I just choose the, the black one here. And it assembles the title menu, and it says, is that okay? And you say, yes. In my case, it doesn't matter what it looks like, because this isn't the last stop. So then it goes and finalizes it, and you'll probably hear your DVD recorder speed up a little bit as it goes from finalising. So, right, it's finished finalising our DVD. So we've got to do, pop it out, give it a label, just pop a label on it, um, and then stack it away. Now what I do with mine is, I just put them on a stacker, like so, and then they all sit there. And I've got about 20 Archive Family DVDs, because of the amounts of tape we had. Um, and then we'll go over to the computer and I'll show you what to do from here.